Hi there, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be talking about another problem to do with the third gauss markov assumption of zero conditional mean of errors. So remember, just stated mathematically, that this is that the expectation of our error term, given our independent variable, has to be equal to zero. If this isn't true, then it's not equal to zero. And what do we call that problem? Well, we call it an issue of endogeneity. That's the, just the word we, we use for it. And, or and put another way, x is an endogenous regressor. So an endogenous regressor is one for which there is a relationship between that regressor, x, and the error, u. And we know that this violation of the gauss markov assumption leads to beta hat OLS being biased. Yeah, so if we use OLS on our sample, then more often than not, it is going to come out with a value for the population parameter as an estimate, which is going to be either too high or too low. It's going to be systematically wrong. I want to illustrate this by one way in which this can happen by way of a paper which uh, is actually done by a great economist and a great econometrician, a guy called Ellie Berman. And he's done a lot of work looking into specifically the Iraq war. And what he was interested in finding was how does development spending actually affect the level of violence in a given region within Iraq? So the big thing about the Iraq war this time, opposed to sort of previous wars, is that there have been extensive stats which have been kept by the various organisations which have been involved in the war in Iraq. So that allowed individuals access to previously unthought about statistics, one of them being um, actually the level of violence in a given region. And what Ellie Berman was interested in finding out in his paper, which is actually called Can Hearts and Minds Be Bought, was does the level of development spending in a region actually decrease the amount of violence a region is likely to see. So he was basically interested in saying, well, does violence in a given region I depend negatively on the development spending which that region receives? Well, so the, the idea here is that higher levels of development spending, so that's spending on sort of non-military purposes, decrease the amount of violence. So the causality is acting in this direction. Well, what would happen if you actually estimated this regression just as it stands? Well, in fact, you would probably get a positively, uh, well, you'd probably get a positive relationship between the levels of violence and development spending. Well, does that mean that development spending actually leads to higher levels of violence? Well, on first, first glance, that's what it appears, right? But in fact, it's because we've forgotten about another way in which this, there is a relationship between these two variables, which is regions which have higher levels of violence tend to receive more development spending in the first place. So, and that effect is likely going to be the one which dominates out of these two. So on first glance, it appears that there is some sort of positive relationship between development spending and violence, but that's nothing to do with the fact that development spending leads to increases in violence. It's because causality is acting in the opposite way. So this problem we call the issue of reverse causality, where we, as a result of the way in which we've estimated the equation, we've actually got causality acting in the opposite direction to the actual process we're interested in. And or what does that mean for our OLS estimators? Well, our OLS estimators or beta here are likely going to be positive. So the level of violence might go up by 5% for every £10,000 or $10,000 spent in that region. When in fact, the sort of value of beta in the true sort of population, if we're just thinking about this causal relationship, would actually be perhaps minus 5%. So the, because of this issue of reverse causality, we have actually got our OLS estimators producing 
upwardly biased estimates of the population parameter beta p. Well, what can we do about this issue of reverse causality? Well, one of the ways is to use instrumental variables estimation. If you can find a suitable instrument, and I'm going to talk about instrumental variables in another video, but yeah, just to say that there are ways in which you can deal, deal with this.